Mr. Chairman, unemployment in America is running rampant. I've got seven months to do in the Navy. Uh, do you really feel that unemployment is going to get worse? Absolutely. Uh, it's it's going to it's going to stretch out over several years, and uh, you know I don't know what your MOS is, but uh, if it fits in civilian life and what you do is in limited supply and they need you, that's one thing. But if it doesn't, uh, you should seriously consider reenlisting. The problem with that is you you know may get involved in a nuclear war, so uh, it, it's not an easy choice. Believe me. If I was in your boots, I I wouldn't know what to do. Uh, Mr. Chairman, there are more and more nations are buying gold from the IMF by the ton. Uh, is this a reflection on their on their attitude that the American dollar is just a piece of paper? I think so. I think they believe that uh, the dollar is going to continue to go down, and uh, I I think that. Uh, uh the 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 pressure is is going to become enormous and nations are trying to jettison as many dollars as they can without infuriating the United States and uh and so some of them are buying it's it's open uh not a lot of them that we know of but maybe some are they're not telling us and uh the the the, the uh, physical market is incredible. Let me give you an example. Um, next week, we're going to have another treasury auction. We have them every other week. And I don't know what the numbers are, but they're, they're probably another $180 billion. And they like to make the stock market look stable, and they like to make the dollar look stable, and they like to make gold and silver go down. And so the pressure came on today. And, and also Monday, uh, gold and silver options expire and a lot of them are in the money, about 19,000, uh, which are above 1,100. And uh, above above 1,200, there's 39,000. And I don't know that we can get there in the next two days. But the point is, gold was off 1120 this morning. And the spot market closed up 70 cents. But the outside market closed up 370, outside being the December contract. And so they can't get gold and silver to go down. And we know they're shorting like mad. They being the commercials, which are banks who are standing in and representing the United States government. And there's going to be billions of dollars lost here. And, of course, the American taxpayer is going to have to pay for it. And so they can't get gold and silver down. People who are looking for a correction, they're whistling Dixie. And um, if you want to be a buyer, you be a buyer like now. But they can't get gold and silver down. Now, this is going considerably higher. Answer that phone. No, oh, no, 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 no. That, these people know that that's just an advertiser. They, they they call me every day wanting me to buy something right during my show. <laughs> well, you know, they, they probably figure you're wealthy and, and, um, and so on and so oh, forth. I, I, but I anyway... When they catch me offline, I let them. I just let them sit there and talk. And when they after they talk for about ten minutes, I say, "Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm on welfare." <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess maybe all of us are going to be on welfare. So, <laughs> and uh, the only thing is, will there be any welfare? And uh, but anyway, um, uh, one of the things that's going on right now, and I see a coordination in this. And we get uh, Jimmy Rogers, uh, George Soros, uh, Mark Faber, and um, Barclays, uh, in addition to Goldman Sachs, either shorting gold and silver shares or talking them down. And they're probably all of, all of them are short. And they can't get the stocks down. They can't make gold and silver go down. And it's my estimate that Goldman Sachs is short one particular issue, five million shares. And they're going to get it stuffed. So this is sort of the thing that goes on behind the scenes. And you can read about that in the gold section of yesterday's International Forecaster. Because they got it all covered in there. 
all the short positions and, and you know anything you need to know we know it hmm. uh, Mr. Chairman I, I have a marine here that comes in from uh, Okinawa he says uh, uh, Mr. Chairman in to Tokyo this morning or to you guys this morning uh, it's now Friday my time Japan's Nikki average has hit a four month low uh, I'm I'm a gunnery sergeant stationed here in uh, stationed here on the the local base, but I'm going back to Iwakuni here next week. I wonder if you can give any advice over uh, what's going on in Japan with the, the bank closings over there. Well, I am not uh, I have not seen any bank closings, and uh, the Japanese yen continues to strengthen. And the reason for that is people are wrapping up what they call carry trades, which I'm not going to go into. But the, the Japanese uh, yen closed today at 89.02. It has been higher than that. Uh, higher being if it went to 88, it would be higher. So it's 89.02. So when the number goes down, the yen is actually going up. A little confusing, I know. But it's right near its high, and it's going to continue to strengthen. And it's causing terribly, terrible uh, problems with exports uh, because they, um, their exports are more expensive. And, of course, the Chinese and Singapore and other places take advantage of that. And, uh, and there's, a real, there's a real trade war going on out there. But you, you, if you're going to Japan... You get a strong currency. Unfortunately, uh, you'll get less yen for your dollar when you get there. Uh, he comes back in and says, Does Mr. do you think Mr. Chairman knows anything about the Japanese airline fiasco and the fact that, uh, that Northwest or Delta in the United States wants to buy them out and why would either one of those companies buy out Japan Airlines whose uh, stock is going for 99 yen. Uh, that equates to a dollar, Drew. I know, and uh, the the price of the stock uh, sometimes is not in clinic of what the company's worth, but they obviously have problems, and uh, again, I, I commiserate with you. I don't know why they'd want to buy it, uh, but, um, and, and you know, uh, I'm looking at uh, uh, proposed travel this heaviest travel week of the year is next next week and uh, we're looking at um, uh, a drop estimated to be 6.7 percent less air traffic and an increase of 2.1 percent in automobile traffic and so people are staying away from the airlines they've been raising their ticket prices number one and uh, it's up which is outrageous uh, they're cutting all kinds of services, and the crap that you have to go through at the airport is unbelievable. Well, I don't know. I haven't flown in, in over five years, but I, the last time I flew, it, it was like a, a nightmare because they searched me three times. Uh, and I'm, I look at these guys, and I try to figure them out. Uh, I found I, After I came back from a trip, uh, to uh, Chicago, I found out that, Mr. Chairman, you may not know this, uh, here in the United States, 90% of these TSA officers that work at airports have never been outside their home, their home city. They've never traveled anywhere by air, and uh, much less travel by car more than 200 miles from their home. Uh, they're, you know, I, they look at it like, uh, you know, they have this, this power and they're going crazy down there. My question to you, Mr. Chairman, is this the same thing happening in South America and other airlines around the world in other countries? No. They, they, do, uh, the they do check you, you know, going through uh, in, in a normal manner. And, um, but it's none of the crap that you put through, get put through in the United States. Uh, they don't act. Uh, the only place that I've, only airport I've been in in South America where well, they acted like a bunch of jackasses as the Buenos Aires. Uh, other than that, they were pretty good. And who are those? 
No, the the customs people in Buenos Aires. Oh, in Buenos Aires. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I, I didn't hear you uh, properly. I apologize. Uh, Amer America is going through a, a hunger uh, pain as a econo with the e economic strain. Uh, do you think uh, the, uh, um, the the American dollar is going to fall to a point where uh, groceries are going to skyrocket? Uh, well, it all depends on whether they're imported or not. Uh, if they're grown locally, uh, they won't be as um, expensive. But as the dollar goes down, goods and services and manufactured goods and and fruits and vegetables that come from other places, uh, bottles of wine, uh, they'll all be more expensive. So all of you alcoholics, you better start stocking up. <laughs> <laughs>